Hi, uh, so today I'm going to take some cuttings of my perennial kale. So I've got two types, I've got Dorbington and I've got Taunton Dean. I bought these last year, um, actually it was early this year, as rooted cuttings. Really small plants and this is one summer's growth. So the, the Taunton Dean hasn't done quite so well. Um, they did both get a bit hit by cabbage white butterfly early on and um sort of recovered a bit and now there's a bit of white fly here and there but um the Dorbington has done the best by far um i've tried both of them a few, few harvests off of both of them and they're nice they're quite a, i'd say they're a bit stronger than your normal kale but nice still if you like kale you know they are good so obviously wanting to get more perennial stuff going in, in my perennial side of my veg patch I want to take some cuttings and expand this. I may even do a permanent bed or maybe just fill out this area here or any other gaps that I've got with, with a few of these plants. Um, so basically, I haven't taken cuttings from, from these sorts of things before. Um, I've done lots of cuttings of hedging and stuff because I actually sow some. But basically, what I'm going to do is take any sort of side shoots um, and just look for something. You're looking about four or five inches long so what i would say is so if i take a shoot like that like i say i haven't taken cuttings from these before so i'm just going to try it but i would just take off all these lower leaves without damaging the stem too much And just leave on i use my knife for these top ones because they're a little bit softer just leave on probably i'll take off these other two bigger leaves because the more leaf you have on the more it will transpire suck water out of it out of the stem so i will probably even take that one off you just don't want to put it under too much stress so I'm going to leave those two big leaves on and the leaves that are coming in the middle there. So that's probably about a seven inch cutting. So what I'll do when I pot it, I'll just trim the, the side a bit more, the, the base a bit more. So I'm going to take about three or four of each type and I'll just put them four to a pot, pop them in the polytunnel and in three or four weeks, five weeks, we'll see, um, see if we've got any roots on them. We can pot them on individually. Right, so I've got four of each. And what I'm going to do is just basically get some multi-purpose compost. So I'll just knock it out, make sure there's no big lumps in it. I would usually put about 50-50 um, perlite in here, but I ran out of perlite, so I'm just doing multi-purpose. Um, I've done many thousands of cuttings over the years of hedging and stuff and um, I've actually come to realise that adding the, the perlite for hedge sort of cuttings, evergreens, things like that, it doesn't make any difference at all. So, you know, I'm sure it does for some things, but I'm just going to give these a chance. I might pick up some more perlite and do another another four or eight of each. But for now, I'm just, just using basic multi-purpose um, on its own. So it's only taken me a few minutes, but I'm just going to give them a fresh cut at the bottom. Um, with, with hedging and that, you would do it like under a node. And with some things, you'd actually scrape the bark. Obviously, these haven't got a bark. Um, so whether you need to worry about where you cut them, I don't really know. Like I said, I haven't done these before, but I'm just going to trim them nice and square and just basically pop that straight down the side of the pot and just firm back around it just do this space them around the pot so left a, a bit more leaf on that one but it should be fine hopefully they supposedly root fairly easily that'd be nice if they do but um I think maybe if I can get enough of these going, 
I don't know that I would stop necessarily growing kale, but um, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't have to do the amount that I do. I do about three beds of it at the moment. She's got a bit of a wonky top that one, but it doesn't really matter. She's a bit of a beast this one. Trim him about there. Could do with a slightly sharper knife. I was cutting some roots yesterday in contact with the ground and it's blunted my knife completely but sharp secateurs or sharp knife really is what you want you don't want to crush the stem too much so again just trimmed them off neat down the side of the pot again it's not rocket science you know some people like to over complicate things it is I learned over the years doing all my hedging and stuff that I sell when I first started, I was really worrying about it, trying to get everything right, taking ages. Now I just bang them in. I do a couple of thousand a year, and I literally just snip, snip, pull the leaves off, chuck them in. You're, you're always going to lose some, but things want to live. This is the thing they want to live. I don't use any hormone um, powders or jowls or anything like that anymore. Whenever I'm doing cuttings, I just bang them in, and you're going to lose some, but some will live. So that's four cuttings of each. Like I say, I may do some others. Um just to make sure I get a few extras. So I'd like to have a couple more extra plants of each next year. So I'm gonna give these a good walk now because the compost is only just moist. Real thorough soak till it's running out the bottom of the pot. Then I'm gonna stick them in a the polytunnel. I'm not gonna put anything over them like bags or anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna pop them in a the polytunnel where the humidity tends to be a bit higher anyway. And, um, and in sort of four or five weeks, if they're still green and they haven't all just died, what I'll do, is I'll knock them out and we'll see if there's any roots on there and if they're rooting then we'll pop them on individually and they can then sit in the polydunnel through the winter and I'll plant them out next spring. It's been four weeks now since I took the cuttings. They're all looking pretty healthy. The Dorbington and the Taunton Dean and I just had a check underneath and you, you can see there are roots coming out the bottom now on both pots and none of them have wilted too much. They um, wilted a little bit the first sort of few days. And on a couple of, couple of them, I did take off um, a couple of extra leaves just to sort of relieve the stress on them a little bit. Um, but basically it's been four weeks, so I'm gonna knock them out now. There's not really masses of roots. There'll probably be half a dozen roots or something on each one. Um, I just don't want them to get too tangled up in the pots so that I'm having to tear them apart. So I'm just going to pot them on now into slightly bigger pots. I think these are three litre pots. I think these are two. So just a slightly bigger pot individually. And um, then they can stay in the polytunnel then for the rest of the winter and, and come on and they'll be ready and, and ready to go out in the spring. So I'm just going to knock them out and we'll see what we've got root wise. Like I say, I'm not expecting masses but they are definitely alive. So as you can see there, we've got some roots on the sides and at the bottom. So I'm just gonna very gently break the root ball apart. And then that's just what you basically end up with. So they've rooted mainly from the bottom and slightly sort of an inch up the stem, not so much down, but that is wanting to go. So basically individual pot just gently stand the roots down on there and then just fill in around it this the compost I'm using again is just multi-purpose but I've mixed it half and half with my own compost this time and um, again no perlite or anything just gently firm it in not too much little tap and then I'll give these a good water make sure they're thoroughly soaked and um, like I say, they can stay in there then all winter and there'll be a nice, nice strong plant then come the spring. I'll just put those to one side and we'll just have, knock these Dorbington out and see how they look. The Dorbington are slightly more delicate, the stems are a bit thinner. Um, but they've all, they all seem to have come. Oh, there's a big worm in there. Let's have a look at these. So again... Just gently break it apart. You will snap a few roots here and there, but 
once they're at this stage that they, they want to live and they will carry on. So again, it's basically rooted from the bottom, not so much up the stem, but uh, you know, that's ready to go. So same thing, handful of compost in the bottom and then just sit him gently and just gently filling around him, breaking up the lumps. And these now will all, will all come no problem at all once they've got to this stage they, they want to live now and uh they'll come on nice and strong so that's plenty big enough for, for the winter and uh i'll crack on and get these done and then we'll have a look when i'm finished so they're all potted up now into their individual pots and um i should just give them a good water a proper soak so you want to thoroughly soak them, literally till the water's running out the bottom of the pot. That just gets all that compost down and around the roots, really sort of beds them in. You don't want any air around the roots because they could dry out. So I just literally keep watering them until I know it's coming right out the bottom of the pot. And then really in here, this, this polytunnel is only a cheap one. It's got a few holes in it, it leaks, it's very humid in here anyway, and um, I probably won't need to give them too much water at all through the winter. But I'll check them obviously every week and uh, see what they need, but that's how easy it is really, taking cuttings. You know, once you bought the plants, so I bought these two, um, I think I said it was the beginning of the year, but, but actually I, I think it was just before Christmas. I, I, I lose track, I can't remember, but I think it was just before Christmas. I started off with basically what I've got here, just a little rooted cutting. It came wrapped in damp uh, newspaper, not even in a pot. And uh, I think I bought one of each type for, I think it was about a tenner, something like that, um, plus delivery. And then next year, you know, I'm gonna have, gonna have five plants of each and I could have taken more cuttings as well. And, and so this time next year, I could probably take from the plants I've got and from these cuttings, the size they'll be at the end of next year, I could probably easily get 10 or 20 cuttings from each plant. So, you know, for me as a small holder, I'm always looking at ways to make, make a few more quid. Um, I sell hedging, uh, various trees and things. Um, I'm thinking of possibly doing like a veg box out, out the sort of front of my house. Um, I'm always looking at little ways of, of making a few more few more pounds because every every time I can make a bit of money it means I have to go out to work less I'm, I'm not just gonna hoard money I'm looking at sort of working less and spending more time down here so possibly next year I might think of doing you know if I can get a couple of hundred cuttings potentially I may even sell a few of these online or something I don't know we'll, we'll see how they go but they seem very easy I man it's a hundred percent take you know that's how easy they are to do and um you could just you could bang out hundreds of them if, if you got the room so um you know potentially obviously I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if i'm selling them online next year but um this sort of thing i think is becoming quite popular i've had a look at a few sites and they sit they seem to sell out so whenever i see something like that and it takes my interest and i give it a go i always think maybe i'll give it a go too selling them online so so potentially it's, it's something that can add to my sort of arsenal of things i do down here to make a, a little bit of money from the holding you know you've got, you've got to make the holding pay a little bit if you can as well as providing food and being self-sufficient but yeah so there you go that's perennial kale um i mean really easy like i say 100 percent take so once you've got them you, you can keep them forever pretty much um and that's that's what i like about these sorts these sorts of perennial things but um take it easy guys please remember to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos there's loads more to come i've got lots of things planned um and it, and it does help to grow the channel uh just give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're, if you're enjoying the videos. Take it easy, guys, and we will see you next time.